we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own supersized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist, and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax, and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is how hacks work. Chores, they're an everyday part of life, and they all have one thing in common. They're all mind-numbingly boring. Well, that's all about to change. Because we put together an intriguing collection of bonkers videos to make even the most mundane tasks completely hassle-free. I like things just so. And so when I fold my T-shirts and shirts and everything, they do have to kind of be perfect. So if keeping on top of those dreary daily duties fills you with dread, we've got some super convenient solutions to stop life from feeling like a chore. From slimy ways to clean your home, to a clever shortcut for cutting your lawn. And in our epic hack, we'll be going from elbow grease to grease lightning as Mike and human guinea pig Stephen show us how to speed up that next supermarket food shop. I'm generally really excited about this. Since the invention of the duvet cover, changing the bed has been the single most annoying job in the world. This hack puts an end to that in just five simple steps. Turn the cover inside out with the opening at the foot of the bed, lay the duvet on top, roll the cover over the duvet. Finally, when you have fully rolled that bed burrito, reach into the corner of each opening and pull part of the sheet through over the duvet. Now you can just roll the whole thing out and voila. I find this to be a really difficult chore. Um, I end up completely inside the duvet cover when I do it. Don't think my method is either that efficient or that productive. Yeah, I think I'd have to agree with you there, Rob. Really, you should be changing your, your bed sheets and your duvet covers about once a week. This is because when you put the duvet over your bottom sheet, then actually what you're doing is you're trapping in the moisture and the heat that you've left in that bed. And this is really nice for dust mites and bacteria to live in. And that's exactly why I never make my bed. Genius me. This bed making hack means your life will be more chill than chore. A dreamy hack hit. It is a truth universally acknowledged that your shirt will never be as nicely folded as when you bought it. So this next hack will show you how to get that perfect fold every time. Another really good way of preventing creases is by wearing a shirt that's about four sizes too small. I'd love to see George wearing that shirt. I take it one step further and then I arrange all my T-shirts vertically in the drawers so that you can kind of almost flick through them like a filing cabinet and go, yeah, I'll go that one. Rob, have you just hacked a hack? Cheap, time-saving and satisfying, this is one hack that could even put your mum out of business. A perfectly formed folding hit. For most of us, dental hygiene means hours every year brushing our teeth. But if you want to make this chore less of a bore and have something else do it for you, it's simple. All you need is scuba diving equipment and a very willing parasite picking shrimp. I get my cat to clean my teeth. But the only way I can do it is I have to eat cat food so that I've got bits of cat food in my molars. But then it's quite good because I can use their whiskers for flossing. So as an adult, we only have one set of teeth and you will never be able to get those teeth back again once you've lost them later in life. So our bodies have a really nice system to protect them. Our bodies produce enamel, which is a really, really strong substance which coats the surface of our teeth. But what could possibly tempt this little fella into entering a mouthful of dirty gnashes? Believe it or not, but some shrimp, like this little guy, spend their whole lives voluntarily climbing inside fish mouths. The shrimp act as mini hygienists, giving the fish a free dental checkup by cleaning the parasites out of their jaws. And in return, the shrimp get a tasty snack. 
The crustacean here is really living up to its name, Cleaner Shrimp. He picks the plaque off for as long as the fish or human will let him before diving for cover. This is what's known as a symbiotic relationship, or more informally, a win-win. On average, divers can hold their breath for about two minutes, so that's actually perfect for this hack, since it's advised that you can brush your teeth for two minutes. This chore-saving hack may shave a few minutes off your day, but only if you also find a way to live almost entirely underwater near a steady population of crustaceans. A moist miss. Over at Hack HQ, with the help of his human guinea pig, Stephen, Mike is devising an epic hack to make the dreaded weekly shop a bit more easy and a lot more fun. We'll catch up with them later to see this super speedy supermarket hack. So far, we've shown you how to change your bed the burrito way and a dazzling deep sea dentist. But the housework is never done. Let's get back online and see what other shortcuts we've found to keep those chores at bay. If your keyboard is anything like mine, it's full of dust, biscuit crumbs and half-eaten sandwiches. Well, we've got a way to clean up that disgusting concoction using your very own homemade slime. First, you need to Google borax, then buy some of that. Mix it with glue, water and finally green food colouring just to make it look more fun. Roll the slime over the keyboard and there you have it, a homemade dust buster. I mean, it's very pleasant and I like the look of the stuff in the clip. It looks like fun to play with. I don't know if it's going to clean brilliantly. I suppose it cleans all right in the clip, but... Come on, George, keep up. We've literally just watched it clean stuff. My keyboard is so disgustingly messy that if I used that slime on mine and pressed it down, I'd probably get, like, a three-course meal out of it. So, win-win. So, your average keyboard's about five times dirtier than your average toilet seat. So I think this hack is a really good idea in order to remove things from around there that bacteria might want to eat, for example. But it doesn't necessarily get rid of the bacteria that may be on the keys. So you may just want to use a bit more antibacterial spray to clean off that dirty surface. Sourcing chemicals, buying food colouring and concocting gluey, sticky slime just sounds like yet another chore. So this is an unmistakable mucosine miss. Cutting grass is up there in the top five of the most annoying chores. But what if your lawnmower is broken? Well, we've got a vid that will turn a simple household tool into a mini grass trimmer simply by, oh, you know, the drill. The rotor blades on the homemade strimmer turn on the drill because of something called torque. Now, a force is what you get in a kind of straight line. So my hand there is feeling the force of my fist. Torque is exactly the same, but in a turning motion. It's how much twist it's got. If you put a toilet brush on the end, it's very good for peeling potatoes. What you do is you turn it on and it will abraze them, get all the peel off them. They'll peel beautifully uh, and then you can use the potatoes. Please tell me that's a new toilet brush, George. If we think about the average UK garden probably takes about 30 minutes roughly to cut the lawn. But using the drill, we're going to be taking significantly longer. With up to 100,000 blades of grass for every square metre of garden, this new spin on lawn mowing might take a while. But when it comes to chores, a change can be as good as a rest. A talk-tastic top tip. The average shopping trip usually takes around half an hour. Well, if you copy the turbo trolley man in this next clip, you can make that about half a minute. This shopping trolley is powered with a jet engine, and engineers use a short way of remembering how jet engines work. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. I beg your pardon? So they suck air into the front, they compress it using a turbine, um, they then inject uh, fluid into that hot compressed air, and that then combusts, which is the bang, and then it blows air out of the back, and that creates a thrust for the jet engine. The jet-powered shopping trolley has a static force of 400 pounds, which gives it the potential to go from naught to 100 kilometers an hour in just over five seconds. That's comparable to something like a Tesla. Check the speed limit inside your local supermarket first, though. The only thing I want to see next is you kind of need a sidecar for your navigator to help you navigate around the circuit of the supermarket, really. Well, if you're illegally strapping a jet engine to a shopping trolley anyway, then why not indeed? This chore-busting shopping racer brings a whole new meaning to the term trolley dash. It's a grocery-grabbing, chore-busting, high-octane hack hit! We might have just seen the fastest shopping trolley in the world. 
But to Mike, that sounds like a challenge. So let's head over to Hack HQ, where he's been hard at work using rockets to make life in the Isles a dream. Mike? Yeah? Astronauts? Yeah? Rockets? Space? People? Trolleys? Shopping? Rockets shopping? Are you really surprised, Stephen? I mean, seriously. Really fast shopping. Right, Really okay. fast shopping. So what I've got here is a black powder rocket. How does that work? It's essentially a black powder composition, potassium nitrate, charcoal and sulphur, all in the right proportions, rammed in a tube with the right size nozzle, an igniter in the end. We're going to fire it with a wireless firing system. I'm going on record now and saying I have a bad feeling about this. All four of them are going to fire at exactly the same time. So how fast is this going to go? I have no idea whatsoever. Brimming with confidence as usual, Mike. Why? <laughs> well, I've never made rockets this big before, and I've put four of them on here. How big are they? Well, they're, they're huge. I mean, these, these rockets, each of them would produce about two kilos of thrust. OK. Well, what's two kilos? What's two bags of sugar? What does that mean? Exactly. Well, if I put my finger here and try and push the trolley, it's probably about two kilos of force going in that direction. OK. So I've got eight kilos of thrust, and it all comes at once, yeah. Four bags of sugar thrust power. Not exactly NASA, is it, Mike? So what do we do? We just light it, it fires off? We've got, we've got electric igniters in there, so they all fire at exactly the same time. They're going to fire it. It's going to fly off, hopefully, in that direction really quickly, but who knows? And hopefully, send Max here flying. Judging by his appearance, it seems like Max has already been in one of your experiments, Mike. Oh, this is Max. So are you actually kindly allowing Max to have a go first before I have a go? I thought we'd test it first. That is possibly the kindest <laughs> thing you've ever done for me. It won't last, Stephen. And you've never done this before? Never done this before in my life. Leaving nothing to chance then, Mike. Where's safe? Somewhere way over there. France, <laughs> off we go. I'm generally really excited about this. I'm hopefully <laughs> excited as well. I am, however, a combination of excited and incredibly scared. Ready? Ready. Three, two, one. We have blast off! Oh. As anticlimaxes go, that was right up there with Terminator 3. Let's see this epic failure in full slow-mo glory, shall we? That wasn't much of an event. There, that was Mike. a bit disappointing, wasn't it? The rockets may not have worked, Mike, but at the very least, you've got to set something on fire. Should we put him out? He's used to it. OK. OK, Mike, almost there. Almost. What happened? Bit disappointing, wasn't it? Yeah, why did we not see it fly off into the sunset? I personally think it was the rough terrain, poor tyres, and uh, there was this little issue here. The rocket blew out the front. Ooh. Yeah. Took out Max's arm. Well, at least you've hacked that tricky I want to set fire to a mannequin in the shopping trolley chore, eh? Yes. Yes, Max's arm as uh, looking, well, I would say perforated is a fair way of putting it. I'm kind of glad it wasn't me, to be honest with you. Silver linings, Stephen. Silver linings. Well, as epic hacks go, that one wasn't quite... I mean, it lacked a certain... It didn't really... Oh, let's be honest, it was an absolute failure. Come back later to see if Mike can redeem himself with another attempt at trolley jacking. I'll be keeping my fingers crossed. We've already shown you the fastest way to change your bed and a disgusting way to clean your disgusting keyboard. But hacking chores doesn't end here because we've still got a nutty way to get scratches out of wood and a way to stay sharp in the kitchen when cooking becomes a chore. But first, with almost a third of our lives spent asleep, our beds can become a breeding ground for all kinds of nasty bacteria. So when your mattress starts to get funky, you have to perform one of the toughest of all chores, the mattress clean. Instead of crying, though, try this simple deodorising hack. First up, remove the bedding, then cover your mattress in, bear with me, baking soda. Last but not least, make sure you vacuum it all up. The first time I tried it, I forgot that I had it on so I put the sheets back on and then when I lay down, it kind of, I thought it was snowing in there or, or that I had really bad dandruff. So don't do that, do hoover it back off. The baking soda will actually absorb a lot of the humidity and a lot of the oils and actually pull things out. So these are the things that might be producing smells. And the second thing is that baking soda can actually act as an antibacterial agent. So it might kill off some of the bacteria as well. So it's actually a really, really good mechanism. Is there anything baking soda can't do? 
a terrific tip to freshen up the bedroom. This sweet-smelling chore hack will have you dreaming of roses. A hit! Blunt knives are the bane of all cooks. This simple sharpening hack puts an end to dull blades forever. You take the bottom rough part of the ceramic mug and you just sharpen the knife against it as though it were a regular sharpening tool. The sharpness of a knife is to do with the smoothness of the actual cutting blade. But the more that you use the knife, you're going to get lots of little chips and kinks and breaks. And we might not be able to see them with the naked eye, but this actually means that the knife doesn't work as well as it should do. But what exactly makes a knife sharp? With these jagged edges, this knife won't be able to cut anything. When you sharpen the knife, though, all those rough bits are worn away, just like when you sand something down. What you're left with is a new smooth edge. The smoother the edge, the sharper the knife, and the better it will cut. The reason that this hack works so well is that the ceramic cup is actually much harder than the steel knife. So when you rub the steel knife over the ceramic, the hard material is able to knock off a lot of those ragged edges and make the edge of the knife much sharper again. With this kitchen tip, you'll never feel like a mug for having blunt knives again. A sharp chopping chore hit! If getting rid of scratches on your furniture is just one chore too many, this next video will drive you nuts. This works a treat. Just make sure you check if anyone is allergic before your next dinner party. Is this what they mean by walnut veneer, by the way? Because I'm not sure. I I've never known what that is. Is this, like, does that... Is that a walnut veneer? This hack works because walnuts are quite a soft material and when you rub them over, they're able to fill in the gap in the harder material of the wood of the table. This hack is a revelation! Why isn't everyone doing it? Walnuts are quite oily foods, so they might actually go off a little bit inside the cracks, which would make them smell a little bit. So this hack might not be perfect if you want to have guests over for dinner anytime soon. Scratched, odour-free table or great-looking surface that stinks of mouldy walnuts. The jury's out on this one. You've finished the most annoying chore of the week, the big shop. But now you've forgotten where you parked. With just a few fabulous balloons, you can banish this problem forever. Another great way of locating your car in a uh, big, busy parking lot like that is, um, uh, what's it called again? Um, oh, what's the word? Memory, that's it. Helium on Earth is actually running out, but it has many more important uses other than birthday parties and balloons. For example, it's used in medical MRI scanners and also in the semiconductor industry. OK, I admit it. This hack, whilst very funny, is not very effective or environmentally friendly. It's a magnificent miss. Over to Hack HQ. The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong for Mike to handle. And with his trusty guinea pig, Stephen, he'll try anything so that you don't have to. Earlier, Mike's attempt to rocket power a shopping trolley went. Well, technically, it didn't actually go anywhere. So now it's time for his second go at shopping, this time with a more pedestrian approach. Have you any idea how difficult it is to push a shopping trolley across a farm? Well, at least you can push it, Stephen. Rockets clearly don't work. So this is our chore hack, and we're doing shopping. Shopping trolleys are really hard to push around. Their wheels go all over the place. As you can see on that one, all of the wheels move independently. If one gets clogged up with mud going over rough terrain, then you've got no chance of wheeling it anywhere. A lesson we learned not too long ago, eh, hey, Mike? How is this going to actually work? We've got a battery there that's connected up to all this radio-controlled systems, little speed controller for the motors from a wheelchair, and then I've got a radio control. So what's the advantage of this, then? So the average shot takes just over half an hour. With this, we're going to try and beat it. Is the average shop normally done on a small farm, though? OK, and so we're actually going to do some shopping, then? Well, kind of, yeah. Yeah, I've got a shopping list there for you. Oh, yeah, thank you. You go around, pick up all those items, what do you mean, pick up your shopping? With remote control, there's not going to be anyone near it. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, I need, need a bit of ballast for it. Ballast? Yeah. Great. Isn't there a, a danger on the basis of the fact that when you're remotely controlling it that you might turn a corner a little too quickly, I might tip out? Let's face it, Stephen. After what happened earlier, I reckon Mike would be more than willing to take that risk for a win. 
There's Actually, always that possibility. Tumble across the road. <laughs> I'll you know. give you a hard hat. Oh, that makes it perfectly all right then. Super. Stephen falling out of the shopping trolley is a risk that we're more than happy to take for this hack. Ballast. A 71 kilo bag of flesh ballast. Could do the same job if I was asleep. What you're about to see is Mike's attempt to improve the efficiency of your weekly shop using a remote control and a human guinea pig. But it won't be easy. Mike and Stephen are going to have to work in perfect harmony because this, as you would expect, is no normal shop. Mike, what are you doing? I'm testing out the new steering. It's our chores hack. We're against the clock. <laughs> I've got right. shopping to do. <laughs> I'm facing the wrong way. All right, all right, all right. Here we go, here we go. Come on! Let the challenge commence. And don't forget everything on my list. I've got your list, don't worry. Don't worry, if you go around the boxes, oh, that's really helpful. Oh, I need to see where I'm going. Oh, no, Or no, you're sorry. going. Well, thank you so much. Well, chilli first, chili, please. Chilli, chilli, chilli. Absolutely. We can't have dull food. <laughs> what? Right, OK, uh, ice cream, thank you. That's going to take the sting off this. Around the cone. <laughs> Fabulous, right. <laughs> oh, come on, there are old ladies overtaking us, Mike. Pretzel, I need my pretzel. Come on, test the steering again, thank you. It's definitely one of your five a day. All right, back. Banana, I want a banana. Thank you, it's on your list. Is this supposed to be a hack? Or is Mike just messing about on his lunch break? I'm good, I'm good. Oh, apple. Apple over there, Mike. Think you might need a bigger trolley, Mike. Apple. No, that's a wall. They don't move as quickly as boxes. And a better remote control. Grab that, you live on a farm. Find a tree with apples on it and get one of those. <laughs> Check out. Right, OK, well, you'll need to go around these boxes, though, won't you? Uh, OK, all, let's... All through them, that's an option as well. Right, check out now, please. Right, through the checkout, thank you. Through the checkout, all through. Open the checkout works just as well. I think we made it. Look, I'll be honest with you, Mike, as hacks go, it's all right, but it probably could be a little bit faster. Uh, Stephen, did you see what happened to the last guinea pig that Mike strapped a rocket to? I'd keep shtum if I were you. As a comparison, this went well shopping-wise? This was really good. It wasn't fast, but it was good. I mean, we've got dual control over the steering, so I could control each motor individually. I spun you around in circles. It was brilliant. And I didn't have to go anywhere. And I actually did my shopping, so as a chore hat goes, it ticked that box. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I missed out the apple, but, you know, can't always have your five a day. Speed-wise, though... <laughs> Would you want to go any faster? Probably not. <laughs> Well, that's one successful epic hack, one failed epic hack, and one very dead mannequin. All in all, a valuable episode of How Hacks Work, then. You now have all the tools you need to make housework, or any other chore for that matter, a thing of easy, hacky bliss. We'll be back soon with more hacks to help you cope with modern life. Bye for now.